like to go fetch sneaks around from post to post. A humming, I'm coming, coming. I hear his laughter. In the stilly night, he sneaks into your very brain and shrieks, I want you. Come on, I'll haunt you. What is he after? I'm a musical Mephisto. I'm another Monte Cristo. All this ragtime world belongs to me. Everybody, it's me, Jackie Armand. I'm back again with another uh, spooky video. Uh, happy Halloween! <laughs> um, I know when this video airs, it's not quite Halloween yet, but it is very, very close. And so I thought I would do a spooky recipe, perfect for All Hallows Eve. Today we are going to be making soul cakes, traditional soul cakes. If you don't know what soul cakes are, uh, they were made back a long time ago um, in England when uh, Samhain was first uh, celebrated, which is just old Halloween uh, traditions. And in order to kind of, for the Christian church to get their little hands in on the holiday, they decided to do this tradition, which is very similar to what trick-or-treating is nowadays. Uh, but instead of going door to door for candy and saying trick or treat, people would go door to door with the promise of praying for someone's soul. Uh, they would get a cake and that's why they were called soul cakes. Even though they're not quite in cake in a traditional sense, they're more like a shortbread cookie or a Irish biscuit or like Irish soda bread. They're very good. They're really good with, um, they're really good with cider, which is perfect for this time of year. Uh, and they have, you know, dried fruit, all kinds of stuff in them, cinnamon, you know, all those spices that we associate with the fall. So I thought it would be perfect. So if you want to make traditional soul cakes this year for your Halloween, uh, then Stay with us because we're going to get right into it. Obviously, before we get into that, I would like to say that if this is the kind of content you like, if you like crafting, you like tutorials, you like costuming and uh, creepy recipes <laughs> uh, and just anything kind of all around spooky uh, that you would give this video a thumbs up and you would also hit that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to ring the bell so you can be notified anytime I post a new video. 
Uh, it is Halloween all year long here, not just in October. So if you like that, then stick with us because it is a lot of spooky fun on this channel. Also, if you'd like to support this channel a little more personal way, I have a Patreon. Uh, patrons are eligible to win and get lots of fun, extra spooky goodies. Uh, and there is also extra content there. I have a patron exclusive series on Patreon called TerraTube. Uh, it is a horror host type show uh, hosted by me. Uh, where we just do a lot of extra fun, spooky stuff. I've had a lot of fun this spooky season doing uh, that show, so um, please check it out. Uh, there are quite a few episodes there. Even just like around this spooky season, um, there's a whole lot of extra goodies. So uh, if you missed out on some of the goodies this year in October, then um, there's always next year. <laughs> and there's also all year. There's more, there's lots of spooky goodies all year. Even just the smallest tier, which is $3 a month, helps out so, so, so much. Uh, and every little bit is appreciated. It helps us make this channel grow. It helps me be able to do the things I wanna do here and give you guys more content. And, you know, also gives, goes towards uh, the fund for treats for Lydia, which I'm sure she appreciates. <laughs> Um, yeah, with all that being said, I guess let's just go ahead and start making our soul cakes. Okay, let's go! Alright, so the things you're going to need to make this recipe is a large mixing bowl with a hand mixer or stand mixer, whatever you've got. Uh, three and a half cups of flour. one cup of sugar, a half a cup of milk, a half a cup of dried cranberries, one apple. Uh, you'll want to dice this apple up. I used a pink lady, but Honeycrisp works well too. A stick and a half of butter. Two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. One and a half teaspoons of baking powder. And one teaspoon of salt. And one tablespoon of vanilla extract. And a fourth a cup of sour cream or you can use plain Greek yogurt. All right, so first what we're gonna do is we're gonna cream our butter and sugar together. Make sure your butter is room temperature. Uh, we'll see here in a little bit, I, which I didn't realize that my butter was still a little cold in the middle. Um, I thought it was room temperature, but it was not. And uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> when you do this with cold, like kind of cold butter. So anyway, just cream them together until it's really mixed up. Don't forget to, I mean, scrape down the sides a little bit so you can really make sure it's all incorporated. Next, you're going to want to add your sour cream or your Greek yogurt, whatever you're using. A Greek yogurt is, or yogurt is probably a little more accurate to the time period, but I'm using sour cream because that's what I have. But you're welcome to do whatever you want. And then we're also going to add our milk. and vanilla extract. All right, so here's where you're gonna see where the butter being kind of cold kind of messed this up a little bit. Um, it wasn't really mixing together very well. It seemed kind of separated, almost looked kind of curdled in a way. 
Uh, but it's okay. <laughs> if this happens to you, it's okay. Once you add the flower in, it will incorporate itself back uh, together. Um, so don't freak out if this happens to you. Um, but obviously it's better if your butter, if you make sure your butter is warm enough. Um, but don't, don't think that it's ruined, uh, if it turns out like this, cause it isn't. <laughs> and now we're going to add all of our pumpkin pie spices, our salt, our baking powder, and we're going to mix that up. I just used a whisk here, uh, to kind of get that all incorporated in. And now we're going to add our flour and basically we're just going to add a cup at a time. Um, add a cup, mix it, add another cup, mix it. Uh, we're doing this mainly to prevent a dust cloud of flour going everywhere. <laughs> uh, and yeah, you'll see here that the clumpiness of the batter will return to normal <laughs> uh, because of the flour. So, um, but yeah, just gradually add your flour in a little bit at a time until it is all incorporated in. Uh, yeah, don't forget to scrape down the sides of the bowl periodically as well because you really want to get this mixed up. Kind of use my hand here a little bit at the end because the dough does get a little bit uh, crumbly a little. It kind of resembles um, an in-between of a cookie dough and a biscuit dough kind of or a pie crust where it's got that like kind of flakiness um, but that's like what you want so um, and uh, now we're gonna dice our apple or you can use magic like I did. <laughs> Uh, and we're gonna take that and our cranberries um, and we're gonna fold them into the dough. Now you can use whatever fruits you want, honestly. That's kind of what's great about this. You can also put some nuts in there if you want. Um, I just used these fruits because they were very fall, uh, associated with the fall season. Um, and I think they pair really well with the pumpkin pie spice, but you know, up, up to you. You can do whatever you want. That's what's kind of fun about this recipe. I eventually went in with my hands again because it just made it a lot easier to fold in all of those pieces of fruit. Well, now we're gonna wrap up our dough in some saran wrap and we are going to put it in the fridge. We're gonna let it chill for about 20 minutes. Uh, this will get the dough nice and cold and firmed up so that we can roll it out and cut it um, out into the cookies or biscuits that we're gonna do. Had to use two sheets of saran wrap because this is a pretty big dough. You could probably split it in half. Uh, 
uh, we're gonna put this in the fridge, like I said, for 20 minutes and let it chill, and then we'll be back. All right, 20 minutes is up, and our dough is nice and cold and chilled, and now we're gonna roll it out. We're gonna put some flour on the surface and on our cookie dough, and we're just gonna roll it out to about an inch thick. Uh, that's about what I did. of like a mason jar um it's like a mason jar cup that you can use to drink out of that's why there's like a little straw hole in the top um, but i'm just using this to cut it out because i don't have a circle cookie cutter but you could use a circle cookie cutter or a biscuit cutter whatever you want or even like the rim of a glass uh whatever you want to use to get the size um, but like I said, I just use a mason jar lid, which works really well if you have that lying around. But pretty much anything that will cut a circle uh, works just fine. Um, when you lay these out, I laid them out um, unsure if they were going to spread <laughs> a lot. But honestly, they actually don't spread that much. So you can put as many... Uh, you don't have to leave a whole lot of space uh, in between each of your little cookies. Um, and now what we're going to do before we put them in the oven is we're going to make a little cross. I'm just using a butter knife. This is traditional for the soul cakes. Um, you can do it this way, which I think is pretty typical, or some people will take dried fruit or nuts and put it... Uh, and put it in the dough in the shape of the cross. You can do that too, if you want. Um, but I'm just doing it the, I guess, kind of traditional way. Um, but it's just up to you, whatever you want to do. a little bit of milk and we're gonna brush over the top of each of our little soul cakes. Alright, now we're gonna stick them in the oven. And we're gonna put these in the oven first for 11 minutes. At 425. All right, 11 minutes have passed. We took them out of the oven. They're not all the way baked yet, um, but what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, spread some more milk over the top of each one. And then we're gonna sprinkle uh, just a little bit of sugar over the top. You probably could do cinnamon sugar if you wanted to. Um, I'm just using regular. Okay. 
And now we're gonna put them back in the oven for about 11 to 14 minutes. I think 12 minutes worked perfectly for me. say in the last year or two that might be of interest I'll make the feature story along with the article something a little uh, you know with a lot of excitement you know how dark well the dance hall racket might interest you dance hall racket long story you got the time I can uh, well I've got the time can I hear the story Helen bring me in the dance hall racket Alright, that's it for the video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you try to make some uh, soul cakes this year for All Hallows Eve uh, and that you enjoy them. They are really, really good with coffee or with cider, especially because the apples. And I, I really like them because they're very versatile. You can pretty much put any dried fruits you want in there that kind of go with that pumpkin pie spice, you know, apples go, you can put nuts in there, you, you know, pretty much any dried fruits you like. And that's what's kind of fun about them is you can make them your own. Perfect for fall, perfect for Halloween, if you want to have an old fashioned Halloween. And so, yeah, I hope you guys out there try them. If you do, um, let me know in the comments if you liked them or if they were good or they turned out really well. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So, of course, uh, as always, if you liked this video, uh, please give it a thumbs up and also hit that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to ring the bell so you can be notified anytime I post a new video. Uh, as far as new videos go, um, we'll be getting into November, so I'm going to try to do a couple of videos. I know our um, how our Halloween party went will be a video after Halloween is over. Um, I'll talk about the party and you know, our video game themed party and how everything went and if it was good, what worked, what didn't, you know, that kind of thing. I do plan on doing like a little, maybe an, a little fall something in the mix. I usually try to decompress in November, so I don't do a whole lot of content in November, but I am going to really try to get something out for you guys so you're not completely bored and then uh we'll get into spooky christmas in december i have been wanting to do more spooky christmas things and hadn't in the past been able to but i think this year i will finally finally be able to uh because well i have more time on my hands now so look forward to that look forward to all of that stuff just because spooky season is over <laughs> Uh, doesn't mean that spooky content on this channel is over. That's the uh, great thing about it. So obviously if this is um, your first video, please stick with us. Be a part of our spooky family because it's spooky time all year round here. Uh, other than that, I will leave links to uh, my social media in the description of this video, my Instagram and TikTok. Uh, where lots of spooky content that maybe doesn't make it to YouTube makes it there. I will also leave a link in the description to my Etsy shop. Um, you can't really order anything right now because my shop is on vacation, but uh, once Halloween is over and we spill into November, my shop will be off of vacation and you will be able to order 
whatever you want. <laughs> Again, spooky stuff all year long there on my shop. So you can get spooky stuff, witchy stuff anytime. Uh, also, of course, if you'd like to support this channel in a little more personal way, don't forget to head to patreon.com slash Jackie Armand and think about giving a little bit of support. Uh, there's the Terror Tube episodes there. There's lots of extra spooky fun goodies, including monthly giveaways and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, any little bit helps. Even just the smallest tier of $3 a month is a huge help and gets you get access to a lot of things on Patreon. Uh, it's it's just fun. I can, I can give you guys more and I can do more with you guys, uh, with this spooky community we've got. And it, hel it just helps us out. Uh, helps out this channel so, so, so much. And I just want to thank everybody who is a patron already. Thank you so much. It is so helpful. Allows me to do more with this channel and I can't thank you enough. <laughs> Other than that, if you're looking for something to do in between my videos, especially something spooky now that spooky season is almost over and you're looking to keep the spookiness alive even further, uh, I have two books on Amazon. Uh, one is a zombie romance and one is a vampire adventure story. They're both available as paperback and Kindle versions and you can read a little bit of the Kindle version before you buy it to see if it's your thing or not. Uh, I am also in the works of a third book, of which I will be writing much more of in November when spooky time is over. And uh, it is about a young woman who is possessed by a demon. And there are two sneak peeks of that book out right now. One is on my author website and one is on my author Facebook page. So two leaked chapters you can read to get a sense of what that book is about and hopefully get excited. But yeah, other than that, that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful and safe and happy Halloween uh, and that the spooky season was everything you wanted it to be and more. It's always sad to see it go and I always get the blues in November. I don't know about you guys, but you know, it's always worth it every year. I absolutely love Halloween and so glad that it exists. <laughs> And that's kind of one of the points of this video was just to go back to our roots and remember, you know, what started it all. One of the things that started it all for us, because um, we wouldn't have what we have today without it. Uh, so other than that, uh, guys, just stay spooky. Have a very happy Halloween and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Thank you.